Uh, re really good day out there, great energy. Um, you know, we got some special teams work, some live work for those guys, which I think is really important at this point in, in training camp. I uh, really like what our specialists have done up until this point, um, but really good for, uh, for the guys that are covering our, our blocking uh, to get some live work. Uh, offensively, offensively and defensively, really good day. Um, you know, I think we got out relatively clean today too, and, and which is important. Um, but I thought defensively, great energy, great effort, in particular really early in the scrimmage. Uh, did a great job against the run early too and, and got off the field on some third downs and, and offensively. Um, you know, create some plays on, on the back half of the scrimmage, run game, and, and uh, a couple of plays in the pass game too. So, all in all, really good day. We got a lot, a lot ahead of us. We got to grow, and that starts this afternoon when they come back to us too. But uh, all in all, really excited about what happened today. Open it up, Coach. What, could you talk about where you were at center today? What you saw out of center, and kind of what's the latest on Cooper's situation? Yeah, I figured somebody would go right to that based on. Yeah, that's right. You're the uh, uh, senior senior guy in the room, so it goes to you. Is that right? <laughs> nah. uh, Coop, Coop had a, a minor procedure uh, late yesterday, and, and uh, uh, he'll be back. He'll be healthy uh, as we get close to kickoff. Uh, anticipate that being a couple-week deal. But uh, uh, today uh, we rotated through a bunch of guys, you know, Ollie, uh, Parker Ball, um, you know, young guys, Vice and Addison Nickel, and, and uh, those guys are all competing for, uh, for those spots. All of those guys have taken some reps, even when Coop was here too, as, as we continue to look for, uh, for that backup center spot. Coach, that's kind of Joe today, um, you know, just kind of from an operations standpoint. And then how does Ollie do from an operations standpoint at center, just because he's kind of getting shuffled in there now, having played a lot of guard, not much center? Yeah, Ollie really smart, uh, played a lot of football, um, has played multiple positions. Um, you know, has repped at the three interior spots since the, the time that we've gotten here. Uh, he's been really good. The communication, the mechanics, us being able to play with tempo the way that we want to uh, when it presents itself, um, it's been really easy for, for him to transition inside. Uh, Joe, I thought operationally was really good. Uh, there's some situational stuff that uh, we can be better, you know, coming out situation. Um, you know, we did some four-minute things at the, at the end as well. So it's a great opportunity. Um, you know, coaches are completely off the sidelines. Coaches are up in the box. Guys got to learn how to operate in between the white lines. So uh, there's growth uh, in that way for Joe. All in all, uh, really pleased with his decision making, uh, what he did with the football all day long. Command. Josh, uh, I'm assuming we didn't see a lot or didn't see a lot of Lester Walker and Tamari McDonald today. Just, uh, what, what's their status right now? And, and just what, where, where things in the secondary right now with the, the health situation? Yeah, those guys are, are in a good spot. Um, we've held them here the, uh, the last couple of days. Uh, nothing long term, um, just based on loads and, and what they've been doing. Um, wanted to protect them today. Um, those guys will be with us here as we, we move forward. Those guys have played really well in the secondary, um, and um, you know, I anticipate them playing at a really high level as, as we keep pushing forward. Ron, Coach, the receivers, did anybody stand out, and how close were you to? Yeah, I think you know the the rotation piece is going to be a little bit fluid with uh, with all of those guys. Um, you know, some of our young guys continue to grow and and make some real strides too. Uh, Chaz Nimrod, Caleb Webb. Um, you know, the four older guys uh, continue to push and compete. Uh, I like what they've been doing. Um, they've operated really efficiently in in what we're doing offensively and within the scheme of, of what we're doing. I think they're playing with great fundamentals and techniques. So. All in all, like what they're doing, uh, the back half of training camp, you know, we're essentially at the halfway point as, as far as pure training camp before we get into school. Um, back half of it will be really important too. Dante's got the ability to, to play both. And, and uh, I think, you know, for us this year, we probably have a little bit uh, more mobility, uh, guys that can do multiple things within the offense than probably how we've played them uh, the first couple of years that I've been here. <coughs> Yeah, the yeah the run game part of it, the defensive line, right, uh, interior and, and guys on the edge. But I thought our backers did a great job fitting gaps, and our safeties were involved in it too. And for a first scrimmage, I thought there was uh, a positive sign of just our tackling in space. Uh, so I thought that was a real positive. 
defensively as a whole, you guys have heard me say it before, when we got here, a lot of the, you know, the kids that had left the program, not all of them, but a lot of them were on the defensive side of the football. And, <clears throat> you know, we've been thin the first couple of years. We added some depth, la depth last year that helped us take a step, in particular in the, in the run defense. Um, feel like we are continuing to add some real depth and competition. Um, and that leads itself to, to real competition on practice. Who's going to be the first one running out? How many snaps each guy's going to play? Um, but uh, the competition on the practice field in the meeting room is a, a coach's best friend, and, and uh, we have that. That's in the interior. It's out on the edges, too. Uh, the, the athleticism, the ability to rush the passer, not just defend the run, is also showing up here in training camp, too. I, I like some of the strides that we've taken. Adam, when you talk about Joe and how he handles different situations, are you wanting him to, to process the offense more? What Specifically you want uh, processing the offense, he's, he's operating and handling at a, uh, a really high level right now. Decision making, understanding protections, um, you know, how to get himself protected or, you know, throw hot. Um, you know, his eyes as far as, you know, what he's seeing from the second level pre-snap and, and on the snap. He's been really good at, uh, at that part of it. Situational football for the quarterback, continuing to grow just in understanding, you know, four-minute situation, which we did from a backed-up situation today, you know, clock management, all of those things are just a continued part of all of those guys' growth, you know, from, from Joe all the way to, uh, to Gaston Moore and everybody that's in the room. Uh, the, the offensive line is, is trying to figure things out right now going up against that defensive front. I imagine they're taking their lumps here and there, but in the long run, how much is that going to – them as, as you all get into the season? Well, I, I think, you know, having to move some pieces around a little bit, guys working, you know, at guard, at center, <clears throat> it's tough because you're in multiple situations. It's not like you're just going into a day. Um, depending on the period, we kind of cycle through so they get a little bit of that throughout the course of, of every single practice. Um, you want practice to be more difficult than it is on game day. And so as we try to put the pieces together and how guys are going to play, uh, in the long run, it's going to make us a lot stronger unit. And, and um, you know, there's times you're really fortunate at every position or on the O-line and D-line where, you know, you stay healthy for, for most of the season. Um, but a lot of times it, it isn't that way. And, and um, you know, you can go back to year one and, uh, I don't know, three, two or three plays in the game, we lose a tackle and, you know, the next guy's got to be ready to play. So. Um, we've gotten a lot of work where I feel like they'll be cohesive uh, when you have your five starters. Um, but at the same time, we've gotten some rotational stuff that I think will pay dividends as the year unfolds. Cody, from practice. Your running back unit, specifically in Jabari Small, how he's developing coming back from his injuries, and then Dylan Samson and Rego Price in some little snags. Yeah, um, you know, I talked about the defensive line. I thought um, as the scrimmage went on, the running back uh, group did a really nice job. Uh, Jalen Wright had some really nice runs, reading the, the uh, you know, what's happening up with uh, up front with our blocking schemes, doing a great job of pressing it, you know, a nice big run. Um, you know, I thought Jabari played really well. It was important for him to get some live work too, missing uh, the spring. Uh, Dylan Sampson did a great job in the run game, pass game too. Um, the young guys inside of our program, all, all three young guys have been really uh, promising and um, excited about that group. Coach Mack has done a great job with them. Josh, you, you touched on Wesley and, and uh, McDonald being out. Obviously, kind of at center. What are you doing at that star position? Are, are you some other guys getting different looks there with those guys? Yeah, there's multiple guys that have been rotating. Um, you know, uh, from Warren Burrell, Jordan Thomas. Um, there's been multiple guys that have, have played that position, and, and um, you know, we're trying to find the right fit. As, as you find the right five uh, to be out on the field, you want your best five out there, and, and how you put the pieces together is, you know, how you rotate those guys as well. Experience that lets him kind of move over that way and kind of know what to do. Well, I think he's extremely bright, right, and being able to handle playing on the edge at, at corner, which he has a lot of experience at. Um, but his total understanding of the principles and schemes and, and responsibilities and where your eyes need to be allow him to, to transition and, and take some snaps at that. Um, his ability to understand, you know, your gap fits off of that too are really important. So uh, he's an intelligent player that's been here for a while, and, and that's a, a part of why. You know, we've been able to play him at that spot. Austin and Eric. Ethan Davis and McCallan Castle. Kind of what did you see out of them today? And uh, how, how much have they brought to that room, a room that's not super deep? 
Yeah, um, both those guys will play a ton of football. And, um, you know, at this point, really believe that both of them will play at a really high level when uh, when they're out there on the field. Uh, McAllen <coughs> and, and really both of them are, you know, so much further ahead than they were uh, when they finished spring ball. Uh, both of them are seasoned in what we're doing offensively. McAllen's been uh, really good out on the perimeter. Ethan Davis is too. Uh, it's really natural for those guys to be playmakers out in space. That's true today. It's been true through the first seven practices before we got out here too. Um, have the ability to be dynamic in the, in the past game. Both of them have gotten really comfortable and, and continue to grow inside the core too. And, and um, you know, Callie, I thought yesterday was his best day inside the core. Uh, really pleased with what those guys are doing. As you work through fall camp trying to find, you know, five guys up front, cohesiveness and all that, how valuable are guys like Gerald Mincy and Dane Davis have versatility to flip sides, maybe even slot inside if need be? Yeah, we've rotated uh, our tackles a bunch. Uh, guys that have played on the left side, right side, their experience, uh, their understanding of what we're doing, but their experience just in general and the ability to flip everything, um, you know, from fundamentals and technique to, to scheme, uh, you know, give us flexibility that you don't always have. And, and um, you know, from JJ to, to John and, and the rest of the group, um, been, uh, been excited about, you know, where we're at, but how we're trending too at, at those positions. They compete really hard every single day. Uh, they compete with each other, but they do it in a really positive way. That O-line group's extremely tight, and, and um, you know, I think you guys have seen that here the three years that Coach ellaby has been here. Coach, uh, Coach Ellaby spoke pretty highly of Bragan, saying that he's probably going to be one of the guys that makes the biggest jump on tape this season. Did you see anything <coughs> special out of him today or just kind of through the fall camp as well? First of all, he's got great energy every single day. He's the same uh, competitor. Uh, that's a, a part of why he's climbed personally, but he's got great influence on the offensive line unit, but our offense in general, and really our football team. Um, you know, he's a huge part of the energy that uh, that we have at practice every single day. Um, he's been, you know, hyper focused on how he can grow uh, to be the best player that he can be. Uh, you guys know he's going to play with uh, great effort and and be extremely physical. You know. Off season continues to change his body. Uh, fundamentally, I think he's continuing to grow. In particular, I think that pays dividends in pass pro situations. Well, you said you want to be patient with Nico because he's a freshman, but you want to push him because he's the backup. What's your philosophy on balancing those two things? Dude, you got to grow. You got to grow. Uh, you got to be pushed. We install it. He's running everything. Man, uh, you know, uh, you've heard me say that when they finish spring ball, when they come back, beginning of training camp, they should be a different player. He's a different player. He's got great command and understanding of what we're doing, understands protections, understands, you know, how he's got to get us out of, you know, it could be run, run, run check, pass, run checks, whatever it might be. And um, he hasn't been perfect, but he's grown. He, you know, uh, one of the things that we talk about is not making the same mistake twice. He doesn't make the same mistake twice. He learns from it. Um, there's, uh, you know, a rep yesterday is he's going through his reading progression. Tight window on the inside, throws the ball while he's standing in the pocket. You can see him vis visually like, hey, man, I should have got out to the next one outside. He's, uh, he's intentional and has great work habits. Anything else? Okay. All right. Later, folks. Guys, have a great afternoon.